Welcome to the leading podcast for long-term weight management. Subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jenny on all social media channels. You can also sign up to the newsletter to receive frequent content and tips for weight loss success. Hey guys, welcome to the Power Over Food podcast. I am your host, Jenny McDonald, and I am also known as the Food Freedom Fairy. So I hope you are well. Apologies, there was no podcast last week. My little girl was in hospital for four nights, which was... uh, Obviously quite worrying, but very draining for all of us not being able to sleep and spending, yeah, four nights in the hospital with her. But she's very well. Thank you for all your messages. She's so much better now. But yeah, I didn't get to record a podcast last week for that reason. And this week is half term, so it's all good fun. But anyway, I'm here to talk today about toxic diet messages and our diet mentality and what that all means. Because... I realised after I put a post out last week that these words are used, but not everybody really understands what we mean when we say diet mentality or toxic diet messages. So that's what today's podcast is going to be about. However, before I dive in, I just wanted to tell you my most exciting news. And that is this week, I launched the Becoming You Academy membership programme. So this is where you can swap your Slimming World, your Weight Watchers, your meal replacement diet for a membership with me. And this membership entitles you to dive into all of my resources. So lots of recorded training videos with handouts, downloads, so that you can start to work on your relationship with food. But not only that, you have a weekly group coaching call with me to work on any areas that you're struggling with so we can find solutions to your challenges so we can keep you accountable so you'll set weekly action steps and keep you accountable from week to week and also to celebrate your wins what's going well for you so that's my new membership program which I am so so excited about it is only 66 pound a month however I still have founding members prices left So I have six spaces left. If you join in the next few days, you will receive a discount of £15 a month. So your membership will only be £51 a month for the lifetime that you are in the membership program. So if you stay in that membership for a year, your price will always stay at £51 a month. Now, I actually can't believe as I'm saying it out loud, it is such a bargain to have that access to all of those materials and to work with me once a week to have my support on your food freedom journey for just £51 a month or even £66 a month if you don't grab one of those places is literally the best deal anyone has ever offered. If you want to dive in, come and join me on that. So let's dive into diet mentality and toxic diet messages. So what is diet mentality? Well, It is the belief that your worth is tied to the size or shape of your body. And it is also the belief that certain foods are good or bad and that you need to restrict or deprive yourself of these foods to achieve a certain body shape or weight. So diet mentality is everywhere from advertisements, those that are promising the quick fixes, to social media influences. And to people in our lives. So it is kind of like the general way we talk, unfortunately. And the reason this this has come up for me is if you see my post on social media last week or earlier on this week, I was in the hospital with Nancy and a nurse came up and Nancy had an apple. She was eating some apple slices But there was also some custard cream biscuits because in the hospital, when you have a cup of tea, they bring you some biscuits each time. So (laughs) we had about seven packets of biscuits in the end, I think. But there was these biscuits on the side and we didn't all eat seven packets of biscuits. Just, Just to clarify that, although the old me definitely would have, but I gave them away to other people that were arriving at the hospital. But anyway, so the nurse said to Nancy, oh, that's exactly what you need, something good to go with something naughty or something it was words along that but she she used the word naughty in other words the biscuits were naughty 
And this just made me so sad and so cross because what's happening is we are that ingrained that food is good and bad or that it's naughty to eat something like a biscuit, that we are just automatically passing these messages on to the next generation. So what happens is if Nancy grows up believing that certain foods are naughty, then when she is eating said foods, she may feel bad. She may feel shame and guilt around eating those said foods. And if that is what is going on, when you are then potentially struggling with your image because of what society tells us we should look like, then you get stuck in this cycle. And there is that dieting cycle of, oh, I can't eat that because it means I'm bad, I'm naughty, but I really want to eat it. So I'm going to eat it and then I feel bad for eating that and then I'm not happy with my body and that is because I'm naughty and I can't control myself and so on. So you can see how this plays out and I shared this post and then afterwards I thought, oh gosh, you know, like I've just put that out there and there'll be so many people that don't get that, that don't understand what I'm talking about and that will just think, wow, you know, custard creams are naughty or custard creams are bad for you. What's the problem? But the problem is, the longer we continue talking about food in this way, the longer the whole dieting cycle will perpetuate for the next generation and the next generation. And for many, these messages, they create this feeling of guilt and shame around our food choices. And this leads to that cycle of restriction and then overeating or binging. And this harms not only our physical health, but it takes a real, real toll on our emotional and mental health. So I thought I'd share a few examples of what you might hear from someone if they are stuck in the diet mentality. So number one, it might be, I can't believe I ate that slice of cake. I'm going to have to go extra hard at the gym tonight. I'm going to have to work really, really hard on the bike to make up for it. Or I'm skipping dinner tonight because I ate too much at lunch. Or I need to cut out carbs completely if I'm ever going to lose weight. Or I can't eat that till Saturday. Saturday is my cheat day and on Saturdays I can eat sugar or I can eat dessert. Or it could be I'll be happy with myself once I reach my goal weight. Or it might be I feel guilty every time I eat something that's not on my diet plan. Or I can't go out this weekend with friends because I'll be too tempted to eat something unhealthy. Or it might be around the scales, such as I have to weigh myself every single day to make sure I'm staying on track. Or it may be I can't trust myself around food, so I have to stick to strict meal plans. And as I say, this talk is become normal. It's just become the way women speak and men. But Obviously, this podcast is aimed at women, but it's become the way we just talk. You hear women in the queue at Costa saying, oh, I really shouldn't have that because I've been so good or I've already had cake once this week. My Slimming World leader's not going to be very happy with me when I step on those scales. So it is just, I can't express how, how much this is like normal talk and it really needs to change. So how can we change it? Let's talk about that. How do we break free from diet mentality and have a more positive relationship, not only with foods, but as I always say, with ourselves? Well, it starts with rejecting this type of talk and embracing food freedom. So this means giving yourself unconditional love and unconditional permission to eat all foods without guilt and without judgment. Instead of labeling foods as good and bad, just focus on nourishing your body with a variety of foods that make you feel good, both physically and mentally. We all know how we feel. We can start to tune into, if you don't know, tune into how your body feels after different foods. I always say, treat it as an experiment. Get curious. And remember, Food is not the enemy. 
Food is a fuel for your body and without food, we can't live. Food is such an important part of our life and, well, it's an essential part of our life, but it can also be a source of pleasure and a source of enjoyment. And another thing you can do is practice self-compassion and acceptance and treat yourself with kindness and understanding. Challenge that negative self-talk, and I know I've done a whole other podcast on this, and challenge your unrealistic expectations because we all place these expectations on ourselves to lose weight in a certain way or to change our relationship with food overnight. And it is a process. I've just completed the 21 day challenge with my ladies. There was 15 ladies in a group with me. And, you know, they've all made huge steps towards their relationship with food, but it's still an ongoing process for all of them. 21 days isn't the magic wand. It isn't the, that's it. I've spent 21 days with Jenny and she's reprogrammed my brain. It is a case of, right, I've now got some great tools and I need to put them into practice daily in order to continue working on that relationship with food. And hence, that's why I developed the membership program, because I noticed that all of these programs that I've been offering over the last three years, since I left the diet world behind, they were all amazing programs and delivered great results. But at the end of a 12-week program or an eight-week program or the 21 days of food freedom, where do the ladies continue to develop that relationship with food? And that wasn't something that I was offering. So unless they wanted to work with me long term, as in private coaching, which I appreciate that is not for everybody and not within everyone's budget. Hence why I created the membership program. So not setting those unrealistic targets that you will have solved your relationship with food in a matter of days or weeks or months. For many of us, we have spent 20, 30, 40 years, maybe even longer, battling with food. It may take you 20, 30, 40 years to start to really get to a place where you feel comfortable with food. So see this as a process, learning a new skill and take your time and be compassionate with yourself. Something else you can do for yourself is surrounding yourself with supportive, positive people who lift you up, who empower you on your journey towards food freedom and towards body love, self-compassion. Because if you are spending a lot of time with people that are also trapped in this diet cycle, that is where you will stay. There's a famous saying, it's something like, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if you are spending time with friends who are all on different diets or all go to the same slimming club, then you will stay within that cycle. You need to surround yourself with people who are on the road to food freedom or already have a peaceful relationship with food but can support you and be compassionate with you so that you can meet those goals and you can become more at peace with yourself and food. So my challenge to you this week is to become the food freedom police, to perk your ears up and listen out for the people that are spreading this diet mentality, that are giving out toxic diet messages. And if you hear them, just make a note to yourself or if you feel brave enough and you want to and you're ready to challenge them, then just open a conversation. Isn't it interesting that you talk about food in that way? I used to talk about food in that way. But what I recognised was, and just open up that conversation, because the problem is just how people speak now, unless they're challenged, unless they're offered an alternative viewpoint, they are not going to change it because it's not even on their radar. Bring them into your world. Share this. It could be life changing for them as well. Send them to the podcast. Bring them to the Facebook group. Invite them in. Let's change diet mentality one person at a time. That's, that's my goal for this week, changing diet mentality, one person at a time. So that is everything from me. I hope you found this podcast helpful. As I always say, and I've said today, just be curious without judgment. Just focus on nourishing your body. And if you want extra support with that, 
come and join me in the Food Freedom membership. It is the same price as a gym membership. It is not that much more than joining Slimming World and buying 10 hi-fi bars a week. It's, it is life-changing. I promise you, there's a lady that's dived in this week. She's been one of the first members into the portal and she's already posted in the Facebook group to say how much value she's got from the first activity and reconnecting with herself from food. So come and join us and I promise you, you will not regret it. So that's it from me. I'm wishing you a great week. We are starting to see signs of spring here in the UK, which is wonderful. Starting to warm up a little bit some days, other days not. But anyway, have a great week and I will see you soon. Take care.